Welcome back to the Backyard Professor Math videos. Because we've been learning the distributing and practicing the distributing with the factoring, and we'll have a lot more times to do that definitely, we've kind of led to the idea of collecting like terms and we've discovered what like terms are. Now this has led directly to the idea of parenthesis within parenthesis. This has always caused problems because either we don't practice it enough or we just don't understand what to do. I'll go through this step by step with you and show you so you don't feel lost. So when you see an equation that has, we have this equation here, it has a parenthesis within a bracket. What do you do? How, what does that mean? I'm going to take away that lost feeling. When you see something like this, you're going to be able to say, oh, I see what to do now. The key to doing brackets, parentheses, within brackets, is to, and, and then we also have braces, the key is to start at the innermost grouping. Start here and work your way out. Begin with the innermost and solve it and then go to the next innermost break bracket and solve it and then go to the next innermost bracket and solve it. That's the key to doing this. Let me show you exactly what I mean. Here we have 2 minus and in parenthesis we have this expression 5 plus 1. Now, here is where the grouping symbols keep things orderly and simple so that you do the right part at the right time. It's critical to do this, okay? So, you have to take the time to recopy it each step. Remember, math's an argument, and we want to show why we're right. Show your work and you get credit for it. Even if you get the wrong answer, the professor, the instructor, will give you credit for showing your work. You want to present the proof, the evidence. Here's why I say this equation means this answer. And then take it step by logical step. This is the power of math. So let's do that with this. We want to... The next step here is we want to copy exactly like it is this outside bracket 2 and minus. Then we want to solve what's on the innermost parenthesis first. 5 plus 1 is 6. Copy your parenthesis and copy your brace. Now we've made progress. Now we see this is a little simpler. And so we carry on get it? We carry on. Yeah, whatever. Then we have 2 minus 6. And that equals negative 4. We begin in the innermost and move toward the outermost. Let's do this next one. 11 plus 40 minus 20. We want to copy this exactly as it is with the bracket, the brace, 11 plus, and then we want to do what's in the innermost parenthesis. This parenthesis is within these break brackets. So this is the first part. 40 minus 20 is 20. Keep your parenthesis and put the second bracket in there. You want to do this, I promise. Yes, it's a little extra writing. We're not after speed. We're after accuracy. We want to get the right answer, and we want to show why our answer is right. So do it this way. Now this becomes 11 plus 20. And this, of course, is 31. Step by step, innermost parenthesis, then what is in the next outside bracket to the answer. 
it works this way every time. Okay, so here we have 106 minus 80 minus 70, and 80 minus 70 is grouped. So we copy the bracket, 106, subtract, what's in the parenthesis? 80 minus 70 is 10. You keep the parenthesis and follow with that bracket. You've solved what's in the parenthesis. At this point, you can go 106, subtract 10. See, you've got rid of the parenthesis. One step at a time, and this simply equals 96. One step at a time, beginning with the innermost and working out. Here we have 3,000 minus 200 minus 600. We want to copy that bracket. We want to write down 3,000. We want to write the subtraction. And then we want to solve what's in the innermost parenthesis first. 200 minus 600 is minus 400. Paren and your bracket. Now we go to... 3,000, subtract negative 400. Watch your signs. When you have a subtract, we have to keep the subtraction in here, right? We are subtracting what's in this parenthesis from 3,000. We are subtracting. When we solved what's in the parenthesis, it ended up being a negative number, negative 400. You want to keep your parenthesis. That tells you that's a negative 400, and it's being subtracted. I'm doing this on purpose to give you the, the sight, to, to get you used to seeing this. Now we have our double negative, which we can negate the negative. So this becomes 3,000 plus 400, which is 3,400. Now on this one, we have a negative 3 divided by a negative 1 third. And this bracket expression, I put parenthesis around the negatives. That way it doesn't get confused with the division sign. This bracket, once we solve this, is dividing one-third. See how that works? So what is negative 3? What is negative 3 divided by negative one-third? You remember how to divide fractions. They're almost as easy as multiplying. You take this bottom fraction, Flip it up upside down and multiply it by negative 3. Keep your signs. This is a negative 3 and a negative 1 third. Keep those signs. Don't lose those. So this becomes negative 3 over 1. It's the same expression as 3 times negative 3 over 1. We're flipping this around. Negative 3 times negative 3 equals 9. 1 times 1 is 1. So we're at 9. But we've solved what's in this bracket. The answer is 9. However, we're going to divide by 1 third. So we divide by a positive 1 third. How do you divide? 9 is really 9 over 1, divide by 1 third. You take this, flip it around, and multiply it by this. So the denominator becomes the numerator. The bottom number goes to the top, and the top number goes to the bottom. And then you multiply straight across. This is simply 27 over 1, which is... 27. I bet you never would have thought that negative 3 divided by a puny fraction, negative one-third, and then that divided by one-third was going to equal a whopping 27, did you? <laughs> Isn't that fun? That's really cool how that works. 
All right, let me show you some more stuff. Let me show you this writing it out. It's important to know how to write these out correctly. Let's say we have 8 times 2 plus 1 minus 4, bracket 4, minus 6 plus 2 in parenthesis. Okay, now at first this looks kind of complex. It's kind of complex. You have a grouping, subtracting, another grouping. But you simply follow the order of operations and do it like we've been doing. We know how to distribute, right? 8 times 2 is 16 plus 8 times 1 is 8. Subtract. We want to keep this bracket because we have to do the innermost parenthesis first. We have a parenthesis within a larger bracket. So this becomes first, but we don't want to, we want to copy this correctly. So just copy that. We're not solving that part yet, but we want to copy it correctly. Now we solve this. 6 and 2 is 8. And see how we've eliminated the parenthesis, and now we still have the brackets to solve. So... 16 plus 8 is 24. Subtract 4 minus 8 is negative 4. We're starting at positive 4, and we're going to the plus negative. We're going to the negative 8 points. We'll land at negative 4. And now we have our famous double negatives that we have. 24 minus a minus 4. You see why you want to put your parenthesis around your negatives? It keeps it clear. Now we just negate the negative, and 24 and 4 is 28. It's that simple. Okay, let's say we have 5 times x plus 3. We know how to do these. We've seen these minus 2x, and there's our bracket, a parenthesis within a bracket. Now this whole section is subtracting another whole section. 3 times w plus 3 minus 6 times m minus 6 and the bracket. And don't let this fool you. We know how to do this. All they're doing is they're grouping groups together and doing operations on three separate groups of numbers. We've been practicing now how to solve each single group. Now they're putting all of the groups together. So what we do is we solve each individual group. You know, it's not rocket science. Not yet. <laughs> but in this subject, we can get there. So let's do it one at a time. Parenthesis with embraces. So we know we want to do this part first, but we want to copy it correctly. Five. Well, five times x is five x. 5 times 3 is positive 15, and then carry along your minus 2x for the moment. So what we've done is we've distributed the 5 into this parenthesis, and we've got rid of the parenthesis, but we still have the brackets. Now leave that alone. You solve the innermost. Go to the next one. This is 3 times w is 3w. 3 times 3 is 9, plus 9, minus, notice how we got rid of the inside parenthesis. Here we have two groups of inside parenthesis. We've got rid of that one by distributing. Now we subtract. 6 times m is 6m, and 6 times negative 6 is negative 36, and there's your bracket. So we've eliminated the innermost parenthesis first. Then you go back 
and put all of your like terms together and from left to right we'll add, subtract, multiply and divide first if we can. So let's see. We can rearrange this so that we have this as 5x minus 2x. We put the like terms together, right? Plus 15. Now this is going to be 3x plus, don't forget our 15. 3x plus 15. Subtract. Are there any like terms in here? Yes, there are. We have regular numbers. So those are like terms. So we're going to subtract 3w, bring that down, plus 9. We want to group the 9 and the minus 36 together, minus 6m because those are our like terms. 3w and 6m are not like terms, so we can't do anything with them. So 9 minus 36 is negative 27. So we have 3x plus 15 minus 27. We're going to put the like terms together minus 3w minus 6m. Now we do the subtraction here. 3x plus 15 minus 27 is negative 12. So instead of saying plus, we'll go minus 12. Minus 3w, we just copy that along, minus 6m. Well, I'll just leave it that way. Anyway, you can't combine any more like terms, so you're fine. So this is the idea in grouping symbols. Now let's say... Man, that was a long, hairy one, wasn't it? Let's do something... Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, and I don't have time. I'm out of time. I'm going to save this for later. Yeah, I'm going to save this for later. I, I've got these great big long ones written down and written out step by step to show you that it's really not that complex. You just have to systematically do it one step at a time. So anyway, that's it for now for the parenthesis within parenthesis. I'll continue the theme and we'll do lots of practice with these. It'll automatically come up that we do a lot of practice, I promise. All of this stuff is going to be practiced. Right now, we're just kind of separating algebra in its separate units so that we can learn how to do the operations. Once we start putting it together, that's when it gets really exciting and fun and interesting. So, anyway, happy calculating. Have a great life, and I will see you in the next video.